In this video, I'd like to describe the Hubble photographs, show you Hubble photographs of V838 Monocerotus. There was a flash of light in January of 2002, and uh, Hubble recorded this area for a couple of years. Um, even a little longer than that, we'll, we'll show those slides. Um, something to talk about here, it kind of looks like an explosion and uh, material moving out. That is not the case. It's not the case. What we're seeing is light expanding out from the star. This is a large region of space. And uh, the light traveling out, of course, at the speed of light is encountering dust in the galaxy that's around this star. The dust scatters the light towards us and we then see the uh, progression of the shell of light through space. So the material here is not being thrown out from the star. Instead, a big burst of light is moving out through space and illuminating dust it encounters along the way. And the light is getting dimmer as it spreads out. And the dust is scattering some of the light and preventing all of it from reaching us, so it gets dimmer from uh, slide to slide. So let's uh, go a little further with this. I'd like to bring in an Earth analogy just a little bit here. Lightning sends out a burst of light, and then that light can be scattered from the clouds and bounced towards us. And it's a little bit similar. Of course, this happens very rapidly on the Earth and dies off. The space uh, event that we're looking at on these slides is a much bigger event, a much bigger burst of light, and over a much bigger area volume uh, of space than a thundercloud. Um, so a little bit of analogy. We have uh, light from lightning bouncing off of a cloud material and being reflected towards us. Um, in space, the light is bouncing off of dust and being reflected and scattered towards us. So a little bit on uh, V838 Monocerotus. Uh, here we are, location of the sun in our galaxy, 26,000 light years roughly from the center of the galaxy, Milky Way. And it's estimated that this uh, um, star was about 20,000 light years uh, from the sun based on uh, measurements of the polarization of the of the light that was coming towards us, if I remember correctly. But uh, it's not close to us, so it's for a good distance away. Um, so January, the burst uh, uh, occurred. In April 30th, the 2002, we have an image from uh, the Hubble telescope, and the light is uh, bouncing off of the material that's close to us. I'd like you to notice the pattern of stars. These stars are not near the star that's here, uh, but uh, to kind of get a scale and see the light shell moving outward, kind of keep track of the stars that are in the uh, in the image. So, uh, estimates estimates say that this star was about 600,000 times brighter than our sun, and uh, large amount of speculation that there could be two stars here, a white dwarf and the red giant star. As the red giant star feeds material down onto the white dwarf, we get a, uh, a fusion uh, event occur. We get a, a lot of uh, light being uh, emanating from that, that release of, of energy. So here's uh, May of 2002. Uh, and again, here are the, our kind of reference stars and our a uh, light shell is moving out, still outward. And going for our next uh, time here, September of 2002. Again, here are our kind of stars to keep track of um, for positioning and get a little bit of reference. The, the light is not moving past these stars, but these stars are in the image and just give us kind of a marker. Uh, but there's a great deal of distance in between stars in the galaxy. And this is, you know, January to September, nine months. The stars are further apart than nine uh, light months. So let's go a little further here. 
Again, you can see the light shell expanding outward, illuminating dust in the galaxy that's further away from the, the star where the light came from. And we can see a dimming now, but still expanding outward for the light shell. And again, emphasize it's not this dust material that's moving, but it is light that's moving out and kind of like a flashlight shining on dust in the in space, I almost said air, but no air in space, that uh, something you might be familiar with is uh, uh, having dust in the air inside a house and shining uh, light on it. You can see those particles. Um, and then a little bit different alignment. This, this picture was rotated a little bit compared to the others. And uh, we're getting into a little different scale. Um, this uh, image shows a larger region of space, so just keep that in mind, but we're still moving outward with the light shell. And October 24 of 2004, you can see these reference stars that we I told you about in the earlier slides are now um, more compact in the image as the Hubble image is recording a larger area of space on the sky. And now seeing a little bit more detail towards the center of the uh, uh, of the event and seeing kind of wisps of dust and there's speculation that the orientation of this dust is being guided by magnetic fields that would apply some force to the small dust particles. And another image here from uh, September of 2006. Okay. Very artistic and uh, very nice to, to look at. But again, a little summary here. In January, there was a burst of light. The shell of light moving out in all directions comes across dust that then scatters that light towards us. And you can see the expansion uh, continuing on through 2004. <clears throat> and I just want to click through rapidly some of the slides here. And again, you should be noting these reference stars uh, just kind of posts on the image. Um, and again, look at the uh, light shell expand as I do a little clicking here. And there we are. So very artistic, um, I think, and but it's real um, photography. It's an image. It's not something an artist uh, invented, but we're seeing light, this light outburst, reveal something that we cannot usually see. We can see dust in our galaxy around this star. So this is an example of some of the videos that I've created for YouTube. Um, there's a full year of physics and sample problems at physics.gpclements.com. Those videos are described. And this one will be found at astronomy.gpclements.com. If you go to these sites, they're free. There's nothing to buy. You do not turn in your email address. Uh, you just uh, use it to find a video that interests you. And you'll see the name of the video, how many minutes roughly it uh, takes, and what the content is. And uh, appreciate it if you would uh, watch a video and go ahead and subscribe to my YouTube channel. So keep your interest up in uh, physics and astronomy.